All right, here we are, the Henry's Fork Trailhead. Today, got a partner in crime, Rob, and we're gonna take on Kings Peak, which is the, the highest point in the state of Utah. This has been on my list for a long time, so I'm super stoked to finally check it off. We're starting at just under 10,000 feet, 9,000 something. So I already, I already feel the altitude right out of the gate. But uh, today should be an epic one. Looking forward to it. All right, little moment is in here. Nice mountain stream. We've been kind of chugging along through this rocky trail in the forest. Don't trip. <laughs> That's the pro tip of the day. Don't trip. Don't smash your face. <clears throat> Let's see if we can uh, adhere to that tip today. Uh, we're over 10,000 feet, but visually does not feel like it. it looks like looks like it could be a forest anywhere, except kind of sucking wind because <laughs> it's over 10,000 feet. So hopefully we'll break through the tree line here in a bit, and the views will open up. All right, we're about five and a half miles in and the views definitely open up and uh, they do not suck. And all right, first uh, little obstacle course of the day. See if I can avoid dropping the camera into the river. That would be bad. All right, survived the first obstacle. All right, we're about six and a half miles in, probably about 11,000 feet of elevation. Still some scattered trees. I will say the Uintas are not like any other mountain range I've been to. It's not like the Sierras. It's not like the Wasatch Mountains. It's not like the Rockies. It just looks so different. So unique. I think that might be because this is one of the few mountain ranges that runs east to west, where all those round ranges I just named are north to south ranges. Yeah, this is, wow. They're just not words to really <laughs> describe what this is like. I really hope this footage even captures a small fraction of what this is like right now. Oh man. Does not suck is the understatement of the day. Rob checking up the trail. Wow, this it honestly feels kind of kind of like a dream. This seems unreal. <laughs> Some backpackers coming back this way. I think most people do this as like a two or three day trip. And we're gonna do it in a day. Alright, we're coming up. That little notch up there is called Gunsight Pass. You might be able to see the trail kind of winds its way up there. Uh, we're gonna go up and over that and then kind of circle around and come up to the summit of King's Peak. Man, this, this giant meadow, meadow doesn't even seem like the right word. There's gotta be a more grand word to describe what this is. I'll have to look that up. It's still just spectacular. Um, yeah, really having a good day, enjoying some good conversation with Rob, sharing war stories, because I never get tired of telling the war stories. Apologies to my wife who's heard them many, many times, and she always patiently listens. So yeah, hell of a day so far. And we're a little more than a quarter of the way in. 
Looks like uh, we'll have some work though once we get up into that scree. But so far, it's just been kind of this gentle climb, kind of douche grade, you know, like three to six percent stuff, you know, on fresh legs, you'd probably run up. Uh, but on a day like today, we're just keeping it mellow. And then we'll run back down, just cruising along. Checking up Gensheim Pass. It's actually pretty, pretty mellow. Not, not so bad. Oh, man, it's gonna be fun going back down this, looking back and having these kind of views. A uh, good number of folks out here today. Surprisingly popular hike considering it's a good three hour drive from Salt Lake City. Say the, the hardest part is just the five to six hours of driving involved in doing this in a day. But let's see, for me it's always right at 12,000 feet. It feels like someone pulled the plug out and all my energy goes away. See how see how things go today. All right, here we are. Made it up to Gunsight Pass at about 12,000 feet. Made it. Higher than the tallest mountain in Southern California. Doesn't feel so bad. Good number of folks up here today. <laughs> How are you guys going to be YouTube superstars now? <laughs> Definitely more views that do not suck. All right, here we are. We're descending down to Painter Basin, so we gotta we gotta go down to go up. Uh, so there's a shortcut route which involves kind of scrambling up the side of the mountain, but we're both training for races. Rob's training for Wasatch 100. We got Tour de Jean, says my loyal 30 followers now. <laughs> um, and so we need we need the miles and the vert, so we're doing the bonus route. Uh, definitely probably less technical than scrambling up the side of the scree field on the mountain. And that up there is Painter Basin. Uh, this is not Photoshop or CGI. That is a real place. Look at that. All right, coming. Come up our first unobstructed view of King's Peak in all its glory. I can actually see little tiny dots up there. People. Maybe if you super zoom in on this footage, you'll see them. We're in some little primordial basin. We're gonna head up that way, but it's called Anderson Pass. And then follow the ridge up to the summit. Here, this is my special effects showing the ridge. Yes, I have spared no expense in the production value of this film. All right, checking up. Hair is definitely getting thin. You can see clouds rapidly forming here. The winters are big enough to make their own mountain. I can feel the temperature dropping. So I'd estimate we got about an hour and a half, maybe two hours to get that summit before we got some thunderstorms hitting us. And we don't want to be on the summit in the middle of a thunderstorm. So, time to go into 
good old fashioned grinder mode and grind this climb out. So we're coming up on the final push. You can kind of see where we have to go. It's one mile. Here, let me add some high cost special effects. Go up along this ridge. I can actually see people up there, like ants marching up the ridge and up there to King's Peak. Uh, go up in one mile, go up about a thousand feet. So we're over 12,000 feet now. So should be some quality oxygen deprivation on this uh, next section. All right, sitting on this little saddle before we finally make, make our final ascent up. Looking down into some amazing basin. <clears throat> Back the way we came, you can see we came from down yonder in Painter Basin. Uh, we kind of came, if I'm not mistaken, we came over the pass over there behind that and kind of looped around. So, final push. All right, going up the ridge. Over 13,000 feet. And uh, the bay, the big game of energy, definitely depleted. Scrambling over the scree field. All right, coming up on the final push. You can see the summit up there. Whew. Sucking some wind. It depends if everything goes well. Oh my God, here we are. King's Peak. Right now, I'm the highest person in Utah. That's saying a lot. <laughs> well, no words to describe this view. It does look like we're gonna have to maybe try to beat a little storm down, but I think we're in good shape. Oh, wow, this. Yeah, Absolutely. Amazing. I feel like we never get pictures when we hike some of the peaks away. Alright, coming back down through the scree. Not sucking wind quite as heavily. The challenge is not to look up and enjoy this amazing view. I've got to keep my eye on the rocks and navigate all this scree so we don't smash our face. All right, we're off the ridge finally. That was pretty slow going. Clocked a 48 minute mile in there, basically crawling, you know, all fours. And we kind of started boogieing off the summit because it started to hail and it looks like the hail is following us. So we're thinking maybe we'll take the shortcut route, just go straight across that little basin there so we can maybe stay ahead of whatever weather's coming. Let's see how this unfolds. Yeah, taking the shortcut, basically bushwhacking across this rocky basin back to Gunsight Pass. We wanna try to get ahead of this snow or hail storm before things get ugly. I think we brought all the rain gear and everything. So we'll be fine if storm drops down, but you can see for you, it's probably been a few minutes in this video, of blue skies. And now look at this ominous storm clouds. Shows you how quickly weather can change in the Mountain West. That old joke, if you don't like the weather in the Mountain West, wait 15 minutes and it'll change. It's true. <laughs> All right, cool. Some sort of high altitude pheasant. We're at like almost 12,000 feet. That's pretty cool. Some birds come up here. Some patches of snow left, some nice pink fungus. Here comes Rob and new friend we made. I think we're hopefully getting ahead of this storm. 
Uh, man, that was pretty rugged getting through the so-called shortcut. I think it ended up being about the same amount of time, maybe a mile or two shorter than the long way. Ended up getting, falling the Cairns and getting kind of cliffed out and had to backtrack. So probably, probably was about a wash time-wise, but hey, got a little adventure out of it. So there's that. Uh, now we're back in this giant basin. Finally got some tra runnable trails again. Feels nice after like class three scrambling to get up the peak. Uh, not many uh, scree fields in San Diego. So my scree field line selection was suboptimal. Uh, but still fun day. Uh, so now we're just got a nice nine mile run back down to the car. Gonna enjoy this basin. Then we have like five miles of forest. Should be a nice way to finish it out after some pretty pretty rugged miles there. I think I clocked it at 48 minute mile on the near the peak. Uh, scrambling around. Anyway, good mental training. Cause you never know when you have to do that in a race. And then just let it go and start running again. Well, here we are. Back at Henry's Fork Trailhead. A run. I've been, it's been on my bucket list since I heard about this in 2014. King's Peak, the highest point in Utah for a brief shiny moment I was the highest person in the state of Utah that's a pretty good day <laughs> but uh seriously great some of the most beautiful scenery I've ever seen definitely check this out it should be on your bucket list uh, so this concludes a good training block seven days where I've done over 100 miles and over 25,000 feet of vert all at altitude since we've been at staying in Utah. A nice little training block for Tour de Jeans. So as always, if you're a big fan of ordinary middle-aged dude going out doing epic shit, hit the subscribe. I'll keep cranking these movies out.